Bem a Jerry Bass. Billy Moore, Billy Moore. Can she make a Jerry Bass? Charming Billy. She can make a Jerry Bass. Look at the cat. Cat can. Cat in the eye. It's a wild life. Cat. It's tough getting to know someone well. When that someone is your parents, getting to know them well can be tricky and often painful. Seeing your parents clearly is like seeing yourself clearly, and that is never easy. And sometimes people get so close, it's hard to see them clearly at all. It's as if they've become invisibly close. But pain, like pleasure, can bring people closer together. Marvin Young and Beulah Miller were married on the 6th of March in 1932. She was 25 years old. He was 27. Didn't realize how pretty she was. Phoenix, with your nose. Over 20 years ago, when my father had retired, it was here in the Arizona desert they built their home. Every morning, just at sunrise, the desert quail come in to be fed. It became a ritual one my father enjoyed very much. Feed us, Marvin, they would cry. Feed us, Marvin. Feed us, Marvin. In the desert, water is life. My parents have their own water well only about 30 yards from the house. One afternoon in the late summer, when it was still over 100 degrees in the sun, Marvin went out to check the pump. Suddenly he collapsed. He had had a brain stroke. He was helpless, face down on the hot, rocky ground. Beulah awoke from her midday nap. There was no sound in the house. And when I got up, I came out and started calling him, and there was no answer. So I finally heard a little noise up by the tank. And I came up here, and he was face down right in this area, and kind of groaning. I tried to help him up and he was, I, I couldn't budge him. After only two weeks in the hospital, my father was moved to a care center where he was taught how to walk, how to eat, and how to dress himself. Before long, he had regained his old sense of humor. But his brain had suffered permanent damage. The doctor told Beulah he was amazed that Marvin had managed to survive not just the stroke, but also the heat. A weaker man would have died, he said. Beulah and the doctor were talking about him, discussing his condition.
He felt left out. He did not understand. My mother took her time to decide. It was not an easy decision. Marvin had always been fiercely independent. It was a source of pride to him. Through over 60 years of marriage, he had always been their breadwinner, while she had kept house and raised me and my brother. Now he was totally dependent. Their entire world had changed. She wanted to bring him home again, but the doctor told her, and the social worker told her, and the therapist told her, you won't be able to manage. You're going to wear yourself out, they said. She told him that he was going to be moving to a new place where he would be cared for and looked after. She said it wasn't far from home and she'd be with him every day. I could tell that he didn't really understand. What she didn't tell him was that he'd probably never live at home again. This is a strange hotel, he whispered, uncertain and skeptical. I watched him as he withdrew inside, cutting away the pain. It was obvious he didn't know where he was. There was a Simon and Garfunkel record from the 60s where an old woman's voice could be heard saying, I still do it. I still lie on my half of the bed. The older we grow, the more ourselves we become. We become the way children are, in touch with the essence of our being. Bueller was always very meticulous in everything she ever did, and she's never been given to sentimentality. Uh, what does death mean to you? I suppose my mother and father, really. And what does it mean to you? It means they're gone. Well, everybody's going to go. Mm -hmm. Does that frighten you? Not really. Uh, 
uh, when Marvin's gone and you're alone here, how do you think that's going to affect you emotionally? I don't know, but I'm going to face it when it happens. She would come to him twice a day, but he was not happy at the strange hotel. For her part, Beulah was not sure if he was getting proper care. He had become irritable and even fought with the couple who ran the home. The brain damage could never be repaired, but reading aloud, writing, and singing exercised both sides of his brain, which helped. Time was no longer of any importance, but the old habit of looking at his watch was. My mother started collecting Arizona Indian pottery, baskets, and jewelry soon after she married. Now she is proud of her collection. My father worked with Indians his whole life. He can even speak the Navajo language. met your husband? Yes, I do. When and where? I'm not sure just when, but I know when. At a dance. Yeah? In Las Vegas, New Mexico. Well, tell me about it. Well, he came and asked me to dance, and I danced. And that was about the extent of it. Well, that's not about the extent of it. If you've been married for 61 years, it must have been something more than that. Well, then he called me after that. And then what happened? Well, I really can't remember. I went out with him a number of times. We'd go to a dance or to a movie or... 
I don't know. Just, we went on a picnic or two with another couple. We have some of those pictures. If you haven't seen them, you certainly should. Um, what do you remember when you first saw him? What, what was your reaction? Just somebody to dance with. It wasn't, it didn't say bang? No. <laughs> Why did you decide to get married? Well, I wonder sometimes. <laughs> I, really, I really don't know. <laughs> no, seriously. Well, seriously, yeah. I, I, he was pretty persistent. So it was his decision? Well, more or less. Well, what kept you together? I guess habit. Habit? <laughs> I guess. I don't know what else. Now, Marvin was back in the hospital. He'd had another stroke. He was much worse. I almost didn't recognize him when I first came into his room, but he recognized me. Hi, son, he beamed. Most of the time, though, he just wasn't there. He was away in his own world. So Beulah had to decide again. Marvin needed constant care, 24-hour care. He was no longer able to walk, eat, or dress without assistance. Where would she put him now? She wanted to be with him every day, but it seemed wherever she turned, obstacles just cropped up. Yes, I did. But it's after nine, isn't it? Young? Thank you. Still the answering service. Ah, uh, yes, uh, not much better anyway. But we'll find out something today, I think. Uh, I'm not sure. We're all getting old, Burl. I hope to be able to change my doctor's appointment. Bye bye now. You know? 
she's deaf. She doesn't hear anything you say to her, and it drives her crazy. Please quit taking pictures of me. I'd never seen my mother so frustrated. So Marvin was moved back to the strange hotel. It was only five minutes from home. The other alternative would have meant over an hour's drive for her, a long road for a woman of 86. So Beulah came to him twice a day and brought him something he liked to eat. Marvin was still not happy there. He was apathetic and sad. She was worried, but she's never been one to share her feelings or seek advice. This time was no exception. He needed something more. He was longing, and slowly but surely he was withering away like a thirsty plant in the hot desert sun just outside his window. Like I asked Miss Young's a lot of time, how's the boss doing? Howard Holland, I'm mad you don't know him, do you? Who? Howard Holland? No. Buster, they call him. No, I don't know him. He was asking about it. He was talking about it. He was telling, about it. telling me about it. Uh, he's honest, man. He know around here. I could uh, speak that Yemen language. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, he can speak, speak Navajo. Yeah. Uh -huh. Fine. On the 4th of July, she bought him a flag at the supermarket. It didn't cheer him up. Later, when she was helping him to eat, he looked up at her and whispered, Can't we do it tonight? She turned to me and laughed, but he didn't laugh. I could see the hurt on his face. He'd been serious. Then he looked at me and said, You need a haircut. My mother isn't a cold person, but like many of her generation, she is very reserved. She also has a very strong will. Sharing her innermost feelings, her emotions, is something she has never done. 
Joy does Beulah's hair every Friday morning. Next time, Dan, let me know. I don't even have any nail polish on my fingers, and I'm a hairdresser. <laughs> never met uh, a gentleman like your father. He is one of my favorite people, just like your mother. And I love them both, Dan. <laughs> Billy Boy, Billy Boy, can't she bake a cherry pie? Charming Billy, can't she bake a cherry pie? Quick as a cat can make a tie. She's a young thing that can't live as a mother. That's not the same. Terrible, don't take a picture of that. Not good, I'll just throw the damn stuff out. It was his 88th birthday. Beulah came with flowers and a kiss. She read his birthday cards aloud for him. He fell asleep. They seemed closer now, closer than they had been for a very long time. After Marvin had been at the strange hotel for three months, Beulah discovered he was not being looked after properly. He had bed sores on his back, his ear, his elbow, and his ankle. She moved him back to the care center. He was in very bad shape.
A year has passed, and Marvin is still at the care center. Beulah has to drive over an hour to be with him, which she does every day. It's a long and tiring road for a woman of 87 years. Halloween is an American ritual. It is a day to celebrate the ghosts and the goblins. At a deeper level though, Halloween is a feast of the dead. Marvin was much better. In her down-to-earth manner, Beulah has already bought and paid for two grave lots here in this cemetery, close to their home. She has already paid for his funeral. Yesterday, but we didn't get it. Is that better? You want to hear it? Yeah. We. Well, I'm ready when you are. The doctor had told us that if he could read or sing it would help to exercise the two sides of his brain, help him to coordinate his physical movements. You can see, <coughs> you can see bacon, cherry pie, milk it, boy, milk it, boy. You can see bacon, cherry pie. And she bacon. Cherry. Can she bake a cherry pie? Billy boy, Billy boy. Can she bake a cherry pie? Charming Billy. Can she bake a But some days were just not as good as others. Cherry pie, apple of your eye. You going to sleep? Now their insurance no longer covers his stay in the care center. And American health care is expensive. Beulah is paying over $3,000 each month for Marvin's care. But as she says, this is something I just have to do.
In this world of dualities, of beginnings and of ends, all things must change. One day, probably quite soon, my parents won't be here anymore. When I sit back, close my eyes and search deep inside myself, reach back to that time when I was small and totally dependent upon these two people for my every need. When I find that place and feel, I feel strong and I feel free. Thank you.